If you don't know what the PC Engine is, I can't say I blame you. Up until I tried making video games, I had no clue what it was either. Needless to say, I also had no clue about its American variation, the Turbo Graphics, which if you do know about, is due to Kanye wanting to name one of his albums after it. Not gonna lie, it is a pretty cool sounding name. So why don't you know about it? Let's go back. The PC Engine was the creation of Hudson Soft and the NEC Corporation. Hudson Soft started as a small radio shop located in Sapporo, Japan in May of 1973 by brothers Yuji and Hiroshi Kudo. Like many radio shops in Japan during that time, they transitioned to selling computers because they dealt with the same electronics and by 1978 ventured into developing games. The shop would operate in its original location in Sapporo until it was closed down in 2001. So from 1978, they had an approach of quantity over quality in making video games. This lasted until 1983, when they made an about-face focused on quality instead. This resulted in smash hits with their Load Runner and Bomberman titles selling huge numbers on the Famicom, aka the Nintendo Entertainment System in Japan. At about the same time that Sega challenged Nintendo's dominance of the video game industry in Japan, Hudson teamed up with NEC Corporation to release the PC Engine. The 16-bit era of home video game consoles had begun. While Sega had little success that it would later enjoy in North America with the Mega Drive, aka the Genesis, Hudson Soft's PC Engine dominated and was the first console to give Nintendo a genuine run for its money. How did it succeed where Sega failed? In 1987, the PC Engine was released in Japan. At the time, Japan loved video game arcades, and one of the common complaints about the home ports of arcade games was the degradation in quality when being adapted to work with less capable technologies in a home console system. Hudson's arcade to home ports were noticeable exceptions. Sega released their Mega Drive system the following year, but failed to make a dent in either Hudson or Nintendo's profits. However, in 1989, Hudson topped Nintendo as the top home console in Japan. Hudson had made a landmark achievement, but it was a short-lived success. Plans for a North American release began in 1988. NEC technology boss Keith Schaefer led a team for the localization. This lengthy process led to the renaming to the Turbo Graphics and a bulky redesign that was almost twice the size of its Japanese counterpart. Vengeance was the sweet dish that Sega got to enjoy in the fall of 1989. The Turbo Graphics was introduced two weeks after Sega introduced its renamed Mega Drive as the Genesis in North America and was so impressive that few people paid attention to the Turbo Graphics. Also, it didn't help that the Turbo Graphics pack-in title was the little-known Keith Courage, whereas the Genesis shipped with the more well-known home port of the arcade hit Altered Beasts. It was around the same time in Japan that NEC and Hudson released an updated version of the PC Engine. It's no surprise that in 1990, Hudson made a retreat from the North American market, having sold under a million units. In Japan, though, they still enjoyed success for the time being. One of the things that plagued Sega and led to their eventual downfall was the division between their Japanese and North American branches. They also didn't consistently make great games, and they seemed to put all their hope in their star franchise, Sonic, and even then, they didn't always get it right. Not to mention their continual add-ons and new systems that frustrated consumers and developers alike. Hudson didn't have any of these problems, except for the last one, and abundantly more so than even Sega. In the history of Hudson's creation of home consoles, they released 17 different models of the PC Engine. It also didn't help that in 1990 and 1991, that Nintendo released their Super Famicom in Japan, and in North America, 
its variant, the Super Nintendo, respectively, and began to edge Sega out of its claimed territory and just obliterated whatever claim to fame the Turbo Graphics might have enjoyed. In 1994, Hudson Soft and NEC released their final variant of the PC Engine and pulled out of the home console market a full six years before Sega would. In the early 2000s, Konami would begin a slow but steady acquisition of Hudson Soft stock which eventually led to full ownership and dissolvement of the company in 2012. In the time between that, many of their top brass began to jump ship. Co-founder Hiroshi Kudo left in 2004, and Bomberman creator Shinichi Nakamoto defected in 2006. Around 2010 to 2011, many of the company's employees joined Nintendo as part of their Indie Cube studio, which was headed by former Hudson Soft president Hidetoshi Indo. This culminated with Takahashi Meijin resigning in May 2011. What if things turned out differently? It's the question asked about Sega all the time, and theories abound for them, but for Hudson Soft, it seems much more straightforward. What if they hadn't taken an unnecessarily long time in redeveloping the PC engine into the Turbo Graphics for North America? And what if they hadn't released so many redesigns and variants of essentially the same machine? We might be enjoying their generational equivalent of the Switch or PS5, but sadly, we can only speculate.